crazy. Here we are, episode 300. It's I can't believe it's been that many, but we made it. So we have a great guest today, John Norum, guitarist from the band Europe. And he also was in Dawkins for a brief time and played with Don Dawkins' solo band as well. And of course, he has a solo career of his own. Uh, he's got a new album out now called Gone to Stay, which he plans to do some live shows for, as well as new shows and music with Europe upcoming. So we're going to talk about all this and more coming right up. Yeah, hi, Chuck. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm excellent. Okay, that's good. I'm glad I figured it out. You uh, you guys have an interesting... Uh, n the number I was given did not work to call you. I had to Google how to call to Sweden from the U.S. I Apparently, I have to exit the U.S. telephone system. It was a whole thing, but I figured it out. <laughs> good. 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 So, uh, yeah, so you have a new album out, Gone to Stay. So I guess we'll start off and talk about that. Um, you know what? It's kind of interesting listening to you. You know, you, a lot of guitar players, they just do instrumental, but you actually sing, and you have a really good voice. I, I think it sounds like a cross between uh, Chris Cornell and David Coverdale. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are, uh, you know, a huge influence on me is, with Coverdale and Chris Cornell and, uh, and a few others like Phil Leonard, you know, David Bowie. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I, I, I like to say, and Glenn News, of course. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, I, I like to kind of uh, not so much uh, like metal uh, singers, you know, screamers. I'm more into like more like a low, low range kind of like Phil Moggy UFO is one of my favorites and, and, yeah, and you know, guys like that. So yeah, ma mainly guys from the seventies, you know? Yeah. Now so, you, yeah. you originally started out wanting to be a singer too, right? Yeah. Yeah. When I was very, <laughs> when I was a kid, you know, I wanted to be Elvis. <laughs> I want to be like Elvis, you know, because uh, my mom was playing, you know, she played guitar and she played those Elvis records at home all the time. It was like, well, this is really cool. So, so, so actually, I started off, uh, started off singing and, and uh, singing along to all these albums and stuff like that. So, but the late, but then later on, I, I, um, I heard um, Deep Purple's Made in Japan and uh, Richie Blackmore, you know, and then I was totally uh, blown away. Um, I mean, it was totally sold on the guitar solo thing. So that's how it all started. You know, when I started, it was like, well, I, I mean, I wanted to, I wanted to learn how to play like Richie Blackmore, you know? So that's how it started. <laughs> yeah. So were you playing, uh, I thought I heard you tell the story where you're playing guitar and uh, did you guys have drums and stuff in an apartment building and you had to get permission from the neighbors? To, <laughs> I've never heard of that. I've never heard of uh, having a band in an apartment building. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy when I looking back when I look back at it now. You know, it's uh, pretty insane. But you know, when at the, when you're at that age, you know, you just kind of you know, there's no limitations, and you you know, you're very ambitious. And yeah, so we we uh, went on and asked all the neighbors around, you know, the neighborhood, and knocked on every door and asked if if it was okay for us to rehearse in, in my in my room, you know, and they, they said, uh, yeah, sure. Between, uh, you know, when we are, when we are at work, which is, you know, like in the afternoon between two or three o'clock. So we only had like, we only had like an hour or two to play. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> and sometimes my mom was home, you know, from work and then she, she had to deal with all the noise in there, you know, the drums and everything. So we, yeah, it was, it, it, it was fun. It was fun time. We had a good time. You know, that's how we how we started, and, and we were mainly just playing cover songs. Yeah, that's you know, unusual like, um, too, though. In in Sweden, uh, be, th they were so supportive of music because uh, it wasn't at the time music, especially rock music, was kind of frowned upon. Like you were more encouraged to do like sports and things like that. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, I can't believe it now when I look back at it that they actually allowed us to do that. You know, I mean, it, it's pretty uh, pretty crazy, but. Yeah, they were very supportive, you know, and uh, 
we did some gigs around there, uh, the neighborhood there. We even played outside uh, this big uh, apartment building, you know, mm-hmm. out in the yard there. And 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 uh, yeah, so they were very supportive. Um, I don't know if it would work. It was different back then, you know, in the seventies. So you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if they, if that would work today, but you know, who knows? Yeah, it uh, seems like it might yeah, be. <laughs> It might be easier today in some ways because I feel like it's easier to get uh, equipment and maybe cheaper. And then there's more programs and things that like like I'm in Phoenix. And so we have like Alice Cooper School of Rock where kids can come and play music. And, you yeah. know, so there's lots of things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you're in Phoenix. Phoenix. um Wow. I miss that now. I can't. I mean, we have this whole just dreadful a snowstorm here yesterday and you know the power has been down and everything so when you say phoenix it's like oh man i, I wish i could be there in the, in the, yeah and well with the sun it's always shines yeah you know it's, it's and, 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 and it makes me think of uh yeah and it makes me think of you know mick brown you know the dock and drummer he lives in phoenix or he used to at least and uh, yeah yeah him i've been, and, I've been uh, the, I've been the <laughs> I saw and him. George Lynch as well. Who? I think George Lynch lives there too. Oh, does he? Okay. Did, at least yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, from, I, from dark and you know. Right. Yeah. No. I Mick Brown is friends with uh, Mark uh, Scott, who's the drummer and Trickster. And uh, yeah, I think I've I've run into him a co- couple times. I haven't seen George Lynch, but um, and you worked with obviously Don yeah. Dawkin, so you you kind of know that whole crew then. Yeah, 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 I do. Yeah, I've been to Phoenix many times. We played there. I played there with Doc, and yeah, uh, I can't remember when, but um, yeah, it's a great place. I have some, you know, fun memories from you, Phoenix. Yeah. You know, you won't be touring we have the this States. After party. We had this after party after that show, and I remember that that particular one, I remember like, like it was yesterday for some reason. It just really stands out you know just being phoenix and you know it was very very nice place yeah we're known for our parties that's for sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> you won't be touring the states with your solo band though will you i don't know i mean it, it would be fun to do uh but at the moment there's no plans uh, uh but you'll never know you know if something comes up you know that that would be I uh, would love to do that. It would be a lot of fun. You know, even you know, even as an opening act for uh, someone else uh, would be great. Uh, but at the moment, uh, we are planning to do uh, the band Europe. We're, we're planning to do a 40th anniversary tour next year. So I don't know, you know, what's going to happen if we're going to be in the states or if we're going to be. Uh, where are we going to be actually i have no idea but it's going to be for 40 years next year since the first album was released you know in 1983 so i can't believe it's been 40 years you know, it's pretty crazy when i look back at it now it's just time time just flies by when you're having fun you know wow yeah 40 years and it was on your birthday too right easy to remember yeah 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 yeah, it's the only release, you know, it's the only release date that I can remember because <laughs> it was my birthday, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah the, the, the first album came out you know, February 23rd of the, in 1983. Yeah, so, yeah, it's been a, it's been a good journey and a, a lot of fun. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm I'm not really I'm really looking forward to that, but but I have some solo dates as well in Europe. I might do some a uh, few festivals uh, with my solo band, and uh, and uh, hopefully we will go uh, to Japan as well. Do some yeah. touring there. So. No, that's Let's smart though. Goes. Yeah, I didn't even think of the if you could get on, catch on with an opening as an opening act with a, a band, you that would make sense for you to come to the states for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That that would be great. Uh, that makes that, that makes me think of Gary Moore, you know, when he when he was in the eighties, when he was in the states touring, you know, he was opening up for. I think it was Def Leppard he went out with, and uh, hmm. and uh, you know, it's that kind of you know. I mean, in, you know, I don't really care who it is. I mean, it, actually, it's just fun to come out and 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 play uh, play for people, you know. 
Yeah. Now, if you go out uh, with your solo band, you're you're bringing a singer because I know you sing on the album, but you won't sing live. Or will you sing any songs live? Some maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, actually, yeah. We've been we've been playing now. We've been rehearsing. Uh, you know, because we have two gigs coming up now in December. Uh, f- first, now I'm going to South America next week with Europe. We're doing three shows there, and then uh, have two shows, two solo gigs in December. Uh, the 14th and 16th of December, and so yeah, we've been rehearsing and and, and going going really uh, really well. I mean, I'm I sing I sing the songs that uh, that there are on the on, on the new album. You know, I sing those songs and even a, a couple of songs from the 80s that, that I sang. But but mainly I, I'm. Uh, it, it, the most of the vocals is is the um, is a, is the guy that is on the album that is just a guest singer on the album. August Dan Nielsen, a Norwegian guy, is very 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 good. Because I I can't sing the songs that that Kelly Keeling sang and uh, and Glenn Hughes sang you know, on on some of those solo albums that I did in the nineties because I don't have that range. You know, I have a much lower voice. Uh, my range is more kind of like you know, but I was surprised when we rehearsed like uh, a few days ago that actually, actually because oh yeah, you know, it wasn't there. So I did some of those songs that Glenn sang and and Kelly Keeling sang, sang, and I I could actually do it. You know, I can actually come up there in that range, but but you know, it's not really my thing. You know, to do I I sing like I said before in the lower range and I love like to do with more kind of a blues blues type of uh the more bluesy stuff yeah well you you do a bluesy uh version of face the truth on this album you you blues, face the truth revisited i think is what you call it it's this bluesy slowed down yeah. version very way different than the original it's pretty cool what made you think of doing that yeah i mean i i, I I was just in. The, I was just messing around in the studio, and I was about to do like an overdub. I think it was a guitar solo on another song. And while the engineer was just, you know, fiddling around with the knobs and stuff, I was just playing it. Say it's the truth, like you know, with a clean sound, like like just messing around, slow. And then, and then he said, like, "What is that?" Well, that, that's an old song that I recorded like 30 years ago with I wrote, wrote with Glenn Hughes. We recorded on this album, Face the Truth. And it's like, oh, really? That's that's really cool, you know. Uh, maybe, maybe we should record it. Now, I, you know, I don't want, I don't really want to do it. I've already done it, you know. Like, But uh, but then he recorded, he, he pushed the rec button and uh, I just played it like slow and and then I just left it. I played for like a minute or so and then I just left it and then you know, after I was done with the other song, I said, hey, let me listen back to that. And when I listen back to it, it's like, hmm, this is kind of interesting. He likes to do, do a slow version. So that's how it started. You know, that's how I got the idea to do do a slow version of the song. And, and it was supposed to be just a bonus track uh, mm-hmm. for Japan. But, uh, you know, the record company liked it so much that they didn't want to put it on the album. And so, so that's what we did did <laughs> yeah no that's a cool one and then um the song norma talk about that one because that has a really cool guitar solo and a really cool like riff change at the end but is norma is that a fictional person or is it based on somebody in real life um the lyrics like you know nowhere to run yeah. she killed the pain what is that about yeah it, it, it's actually it's about uh marilyn monroe Nor- norma g oh you know? sure uh, and yeah, so it's about it's it's about her 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 story basically when she comes to Hollywood and you know what can happen to uh, people that come to Hollywood and want to be you know movie stars and things like that and and it doesn't always turn out uh, good in the end you know so did yeah, you did you go to Hollywood. Did you did you ever live there uh, in the eighties or anything, or have you always lived over in Europe? No, no, I, I, I lived I lived in California for ten years. Oh wow! Uh, from yeah, actually a little bit more than ten years. I think it was like 12, 12 13 years. Yeah, when, when I when when I got the gig with uh, with Don Dawkins, um, I was supposed to be in California 
for or in Los Angeles for for two months to record the Up from the Ashes album, but I ended up staying for twelve years, you know, because I, I liked it so much, and and I, I met uh, you know I met my my wife there, and uh, we had a kid together, and um, so uh, I decided to stay, you know. So I stayed there. I, I stayed there until uh, I, I got I got the phone call from uh, Ian Haugland, the drummer in Europe, who said he was, you know, um, what, they were they were going to have a meeting and talk about a, a Europe reunion. And ask he asked me if I was interested to you know come to this meeting and I said sure you know. And so yeah, I lived in California for a long time, and uh, actually I just moved back to Sweden because of the Europe reunion because that's where that's where they are. You know? Oh, Otherwise, that makes I, sense. I might have stayed. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you know, when you get a little bit older too, you know, I was missing my family and stuff, and I, I've been I've been in California for so long, and 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 I just thought I, I wanted to I, actually the last couple of years we. Um, we did it like half and half. I was six months in California, six months in, in Sweden. You know, in the summertime, Sweden is, be- is a beautiful place. Sure. In the winter, it's kind, of, it's kind of cold and depressing and dark and everything. So so in the winter, we kind of uh, escaped to California. We were there, you know, in the wintertime. And, uh, but then when the reunion happened, uh, I just uh, I decided to stay in Sweden, you know. So were you? So you did the Don Dawkin album, and um, and then the rest was it just solo albums you were working on when you were living in California then? Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, I did the Faith the Truth there. I did uh, with Glenn News, and uh, that was I think that was in ninety one or ninety two, and then I did another. The next one was another Destination, which was out came out in I think it came out in ninety five. And I did another one. The next one was uh, "Worlds Away," which I think came out in '97. So yeah, all those albums were done in, in the states. Yeah. In did you? Did I hear you say something about you worked with uh, Mike Varney of Shrapnel Rec- Records, and it didn't go so well? Because I've had like Blue Sarcino and Richie Kotzen, and I don't think they said anything bad. But I heard you say that it, it, he took too much royalties or something like that. Well, he never sent any royalty statements ever, you know. <laughs> so, oh. You know, uh, yeah. So, but, you know, he, uh, I don't want to say anything bad about him, but, you know, the, yeah, the business side of things were not that great, you know. And uh, But he did he did release uh, uh, one, of the, one of the albums. Uh, I think it was Another Destination, which came out in 95. Yeah. He released that one in the States. And the ones before that, I did Total Control and Face the Truth were on uh, Sony or CBS. The first one on CBS, but then later on, you know, it became Sony. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the next one, I, I and the next one was the, the third solo album was uh, the one that Mike Horney released you know, on Shrapnel Records. Yeah. yeah. So you must have learned a lot being in the music business this long, like, do you look back? Is there is there certain things like clarity you have? Like, I mean, the biggest thing for me that uh, I'm sure you get asked this question all the time, but the first uh, time that you left Europe right after the biggest album, I mean, that's so unusual. Um, I know there was a lot of I heard there was some like egos and there was management issues. Do you look back? Is there something you would have done differently? Would you have fired the management or were you try to work it out with your bandmates? Uh, or are you happy with that decision to leave at that time? I'm very happy with it. I mean, that, that's the best thing I, I've, I've done. I mean, in my career <laughs> to leave the band, leave that band at that time. You know? uh, for for many reasons, like, like you like you said, I mean, the management problems were a lot of man. You know, I didn't get along with the manager. I mean, I didn't like that whole image bubblegum image thing. And you know. Uh, the guys in the band, you know, they were all getting all weird and stuff, and and um, and but you know, I mean, I, and also, I mean, you know, if I wouldn't have left, I, I wouldn't have come to California. I wouldn't have had the opportunity to work with Don Dawkins and and uh, and Peter Baltis and Billy White, you know, and uh, Mickey D, and make that album, and then also to work with Glenn Hughes, you know, on. on my, my second solo album, Face the Truth, and 
and of course, uh, if I, and then of course my son, you know, I mean, mm. you know, I wouldn't have met my, my wife there. I mean, I wouldn't have met, met my wife and, and we wouldn't have had, had a, a, a kid, you know, so yeah, it was the best thing that could have happened at the time. You know? and so I had no, no regrets whatsoever. And, and a lot of people have kind of a misconception of the whole thing too. I mean, they don't really know the whole whole story which is understandable but but uh, the, the thing was there's a lot of people that says so he left right before they made it big it's like no when I was in the band I already toured you know all of Europe uh, we, we were in Japan we did a tour in Japan we did a tour in Scandinavia uh, the album was already number one in 25 countries when I was in the band you know but at the time, you know, I was, I didn't care. I just wanted, I just wanted to, you know, get away from, from the whole thing. You know, it was just, it, it wasn't my thing at the time. But plus I was very young, you know, so I didn't really know how things work and, and uh, how much work you have to do and do all these playback shows in Europe and, and all these photo sessions from morning till late at night and, and this and that. And, and it, it, it was just too much. I, I wasn't, I wasn't ready for it really, mm. you know. Oh. Yeah, it just yeah. makes you wonder though. Like, and nothing. To get, I had Key Marcel on the show. He's great, and uh, I, I like the album that he did with Europe too. But it just makes me wonder if you had stayed, uh, would what would you guys would have created for the the follow up? If it would have been different, if your contributions would have made a difference, or maybe it would have just been similar. I don't know. Uh, I think it would would have been pretty similar. I think. Uh, because I mean, the main songwriter in the band was uh, was Joey Tempest sure. at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the you know since the reunion, we all been writing a, a lot together. You know, but at the time, Joey pretty much wrote pretty much ninety percent of all the songs. You know, mm -hmm. so the songs would have probably been pretty much the same, I, I guess. You know, but. Uh, I can't even think about that. You know, I, I never even thought of that, that. I'm just so glad that I left when I left. And, and I, I it was just such an amazing experience to, to, to record that album uh, with Don Dock and, and we had so much fun on that tour. I, I, I mean, to this day, that's the most fun tour I've ever done. I mean, it was incredible. Great bunch of guys and the band was incredible live. And, and so, yeah, it was, it, it was the right decision for sure. You know, do you think no? So you, I heard you say that you kind of argued with Don. Was that on his solo record or was that more when you actually joined doc in the band? Cause you said there were some disagreements, like he would listen to you, but then he would do whatever he wanted anyways. Like he was more business oriented. You were more artistic. Yeah. 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 I mean that, that was, that was, wasn't on up from the ashes though. You know that, I mean, we got along great. I mean, um, we still do to this day. I mean, we're very good friends and everything. And I also did, I mean, I did a tour with, with them, with the original members in Doc in, in 90, 97, when uh, they had reunited and George Lynch had left in the middle of the tour. I think it was a dysfunctional tour. Uh, they call it. <laughs> well, the album was called dysfunctional at least. Right. <laughs> and, uh, so so I went I went to the states because I was in Sweden at the time and and uh, went to the states and did a couple of weeks with them and it was great and they were, actually wanted me to stay in the band you know but but I had commitments to do another solo album so um, so I, I did that and uh, and later on I I got a, I got a phone call from Don again for this and which was in two thousand one I, I believe. Uh, if I was interested to to make an album with him, and that 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 was that that was that was not not a good experience though, because then, then it was he, he was going to produce it himself, and it it, it it was just a mess, you know. And the songs were not there, you know. They were kind of just a lot of fillers, and and. Uh, yeah, the mix was bad, and yeah, that, that that so that that was. But I did the tour after that. I stayed in the band for a year, huh. but but that that was a pretty uh, miserable tour after that. And 
a lot of a lot of things have changed. You know, it's a it's a lot. You know, it's a big time. I mean, from from that. 89 until 2001 you know a lot of years has gone by you know there were a lot of problems you know at yeah that time. so that was that, that i shouldn't have done that album you know, that was a big mistake hmm. you know yeah so then be- but before you yeah. rejoined europe you you flirted with a little bit of possibly joining ufo right you were talking with them and sending demos it never happened because of the europe thing but you almost joined ufo yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I was in contact with Phil Mogg and uh, and Pete Way, um, and uh, I was sending I was sending some demos. Or I, I thought I, I think I sent like five or six song ideas over to Phil, and he would start working on it and stuff. And and uh, and in the, right in the middle of that, that's when I got the phone call. Uh, from Ian Haugland, the drummer in Europe, to you know, if if I were interested to to come to this meeting, and uh, so I, I so I, I said, sure, you know, let's talk about it. And I thought they were just going to do that. We were just going to do one like a reunion tour, and that's it. But no, they were more they wanted to do another album, and or they wanted to do a new album, and uh, so really, so I had to. So I, w- I was talking to the UFO's management, and uh, and I, I call I, I called them up and I said, you know, I I've, I've gotten this offer, or, or or Europe wants to do a reunion thing, and I decided that I wanted to do that, that I'm going to go go ahead and do that, and and they said like, well, can't you just do both? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. No, no. <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna say, I, I just, it's just too much, you yeah. know. And also, also after 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 the Dawkins experience, uh, uh, well, actually, you know, we only played like maybe one or two new songs from that Long Way Home album. The rest was just uh, old stuff. Mm. And uh, as so, and they wanted me basically just to copy George Lynch, mm. and. Uh, and also, I was thinking, you know, the same thing is going to happen if I was going to join UFO. You know, I pretty much have to copy Mike Schenker, you know. Mm. I mean, you you know, you have to stick to the melodies and all that stuff. So sure. so, so I was done. I was just done copying other guitar players, you know, at the time. Did so, anything ever so, happen uh, with those songs, though, that you uh, kind of worked on with Phil? No, no, there, and never, I never haven't done anything with them. Hmm. They're still, still around. They're still around somewhere on a cassette. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. I, I do, I do remember a couple of them. You know, they were very much in a UFO, traditional UFO, like uh, no heavy petting, lights out, that type of uh, style. Hmm. You know, and uh, but um, yeah, you know, I. Just going in there and and uh, coming from George Lynch or the Dawkins thing, pretty much copying his solo like you know ninety percent of of the time and uh, and then pretty much you kind of have to do the same thing because the solos are such a big part of the the songs so you kind of sure. have to stick to certain things you know you can of course you can go out and do different things like in the rock bottom or something and do whatever just like Benny Moore does and he does a, a great job you know uh, but when the Europe thing came up I just thought well, you know I get to play my own song I get to play my own solos uh, again and uh, so I decided to, to do that instead which was the right decision I think yeah absolutely and you guys made some new albums and then I hear that you'll be working on a new uh, album in in 2023. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. We're going to start working, and we're going to start. Plan is to uh, start recording in May. So we we are writing right now as we speak. Everyone is writing new songs, and and uh, we're looking forward to this tour now too, which is starting next week. From the South America, we're doing. Argentina, Brazil, uh, Chile, and you know, so yeah, and then also looking forward to doing some 
some solo solo dates as well because I haven't played these songs for like 20 years. The last gig I remember I did as a solo artist was in 19, well, actually it was in 1999, I think. That's oh, the one, wow. that's the last one I can remember. That's the last one I can remember, at least. Dang. <laughs> you know, it's just because I've seen because I've seen footage of it. Yeah. So it's actually, you know, like twenty, 20 well, It's more than twenty years, then, you know. Mm-hmm. Because now I've been in Europe. I, I've been in Europe now for eighteen years. You know, uh, since the reunion. So I hasn't I haven't done any solo gigs. So, so I'm looking forward to revisiting those old songs again, and also from from the new album. We played like five songs from the new album, you know, and they they sound great. It sounds really great. Yeah, the new album. I mean, I was looking at what's what kind of blew me away was the the music videos. Um, I mean, you looks like you had a pretty big budget for these music videos. Like they're pretty like the sail away. <laughs> you got this Viking ship, and I like the beard. By the way, I think that's that's you with a beard, right, in the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. I should never shave. I shouldn't shouldn't have shaved. You know, I should have kept the beard. I think it looks cool. It, it yeah. took a long time. It, it took a long time to grow grow it. <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah I, I i like to do different things you know I, I wouldn't stick to the viking thing you know for every video and stuff like that but but uh it just kind of fit that song that that, that is a, a huge uh that, that that is a viking riff you know mm-hmm. and i had this idea wouldn't it wouldn't, wouldn't it be kind of cool to you know be on a biking ship and for this song you know and out there and and uh we were lucky that day it, it was a big storm because it wouldn't wouldn't have had the same effect if, if it would have been a you know sunny day and you know a calm sea you know <laughs> so that day it was raining and it was just you know the boat was just, you know it was all over the place so and so it, it came out great i'm very happy with that video and but then you know for the next song uh, voices of silence the next single and video you know and i like to change you know and do different things for different songs and you know uh, that's why i was always a huge fan of, uh, of of david bowie you know always keeps changing all the time he doesn't just do the same thing over and over again all the time so yeah uh, i like to mix it mix it up and have fun with it yeah, the album's eclectic. I like it. Uh, it's got a good... Then the, the One by One, um, that's another... You've made a video for that. It's like an acoustic kind of ballad, and that's really a cool song, too. Very different than everything else on the record. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a, uh, yeah, that, that's a really good song. Um, it's... Uh, I guess that's the song that is closest to what, uh, what, what Europe does, you know. I mean, you know, when it gets to the more... Uh, more uh, popular, popular side uh, of things, you know. But uh, he also has some Be- Beatles influences in there. You, know, you can hear it. And, uh, yeah, so that's a good song. I, I don't, I don't want everything to just be doomy, gloomy. You know? <laughs> so, so I want to do. do uh, sometimes it's okay to throw in a, you know, a happy tune once in a while. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's all it's all great stuff. I look forward. Hopefully, I can catch it live. That'd be fun, especially if you're opening for. I like to be able to catch three, you know, two, three bands at a time. That, and the festival, I love that idea. That's great too. That's smart. If you can yeah. get on one of those, yeah, yeah, very, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to do some festivals next year. You know, that would be a lot of fun. You know? Yeah, and and then do do an American tour, a U.S. tour would would be fantastic. You know, it would be a lot of fun. Very cool. Well, I know you got to get going. Um, I always end um, each episode uh, promoting a, a charity or a cause. Is there one that you've ever worked with um, or one, a cause that's near and dear to your heart that people can donate to after they uh, buy your album, of course? Uh, charity. Uh, well, the band in Europe, we, we do some charity work sometimes, you know, for different, different things, you know, and, uh, you know, for cancer research and, uh, and and all kinds of stuff, you know, and uh, uh, well, you know, I I always like to help, you know, the people that are the less fortunate, you know, the starving children in in in, uh, in Africa and things like that. It's it's a thing that I think about a lot, you know. So so it's always a good thing to donate uh, money to. Okay, great. I'll put something to, in the, in the link. Just, 
uh, in the links along with your yeah. website and Europe's website. We'll look forward to new music uh, from Europe uh, next year and uh, to shows with Europe and shows uh, solo shows as well. And people can get the new album. Yeah. It's out. Your solo one's out now. Gone to stay. Yeah. 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 All right. Thanks, Thanks John. Yeah. That, thank you, Chuck. I really appreciate it. It was a, we, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Talking to you. And I hope to, uh, to see you, uh, you know, uh, sometime in the future, near future when we can, uh, you know, play some live shows. Absolutely. That would be a lot of, a lot of fun. That sounds yeah. good to me. All right. Thanks a lot, John. I'll see you later. All right. Take care. All okay. right. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. My thanks again to John Norum. The new album is called Gone to Stay. It's out now. Check out his website and the Europe website for current tour dates. And the websites are in the show notes along with the charity and my website. If you want to check out other episodes, follow us on social media or whatever. 300 episodes. It's crazy to me. It's been a fun ride and I really appreciate all your support your listens, likes, shares, comments, subscribes, all that stuff kept me motivated to keep going and keep making more podcasts. And I'll just keep going as long as we continue to grow. My thanks again to all of you. Have a great day and shoot for the moon.